Hello. Hello, DEFCON. So, yeah, um, this is Fear, Uncertainty, and the Digital Armageddon. I hope everyone here can see the humor in that without that having to be explained. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, let me just get the point in the right place. So, yeah, my name's Morgan, and um, I'm a security guy. I am um, from... Ooh, hold on a second. Which slides am I actually going with here? Ah, so guys, slight wardrobe malfunction. There we go. So I'm a security guy. I uh, hack SCADA networks, critical infrastructure. I work for a firm called securityassessment.com <clears throat> from New Zealand. Uh, so I'm going to go over uh, what SCADA is, why it's really hip right now, and then talk a bit about hacking it. I'm not going to talk about low-level protocols like Modbus, but if you guys were like Mark Bristow's talk before, then you would have got a pretty in-depth run over that anyway. Uh, Sorry. Better? All right, so uh, there's a tendency by the media to refer to like all industrial control systems as SCADA. Uh, what I'm primarily concerned with is power, water, uh, critical infrastructure, mass manufacturing, that sort of thing. Uh, now the risk in these environments is largely defined by the threat, right? Like we're talking power blackouts, dams opening, all that sort of bad stuff. Um, probably not global thermonuclear war, but you know, uh, we have had some, you know, stuff like this, big explosions and whatnot. Uh, these are from an accident that actually happened in uh, Bellingham, Washington. Now, this was uh, 137, or 237,000 gallons of gasoline that caught fire on a creek, killed a couple of people and caused a lot of property damage. Um, this was actually an accident, but was a really big firewall you could see from Canada. Um, so it wasn't a small explosion. The um, largest non-nuclear explosion in the world was actually a result of a SCADA accident or sca sabotage, depending on who you believe, that apparently happened in Russia. It was the largest gas pipeline explosion ever. Um, there's been a bunch of SCADA incidents which have been reasonably well publicized over the years. Uh, Russian hackers taking over gas pipelines, a guy called Vidic Bowden in Australia dumping sewerage into drinking water, a real jerk there. Um, there's been a lot of press recently about maybe Al Qaeda is going to perform SCADA attacks, Chinese hackers are getting all up in the SCADA, you know, everyone's having a go. Um, now, I think we're more worried about this than we used to be just because hacking's a lot easier than it used to be. Like, hacking used to be about quite skilled dudes performing quite, quite trivial attacks and kind of coming up with it themselves. Now, because of the rise of like exploitation platforms and OD packs and that sort of thing, you can get other people to do all the work for you and offset time and skill with money. So you can just buy yourself a Russian OD pack and you know you're off to be a bad guy. Um, now, the digital Armageddon obviously hasn't happened yet, but without hype, there's no story, right? So it does behoove the media to, you know, juice it up a bit and get people people worked up. I mean, despite this, you get, like, you know, the blaster didn't cause the East Coast power outage. Everyone knows stories of teenage hackers that get pretty overblown. And uh, Chinese hackers get blamed for everything these days, like kicking your dog, taking your girlfriend, you know. Um, a lot of the dire predictions so far also have been quite incorrect. IDC named 2003 Year of Cyberterrorism, said the internet would crumble. Obviously it didn't happen, you know. So before we progress, I'm going to explain a little bit about what a SCADA system actually is, and then we'll get to the good stuff, the pop shots, the owning, so forth. So SCADA system is basically generally a spread out geographically remote set of systems um, that are controlled by a central computer. At the edges, you've got uh, remote terminal units of the older programmable logic controllers. And they do the grunt work of a SCADA network, uh, control mechanical devices, pumps, switches, valves, that sort of thing, monitor levels. Um, this is an example from a water treatment plant. So you've got you know, the PLCs here, and they measure flow according to set points, which are set by a human at the other end. Um, this is, I've got quite a collection of SCADA porn if people want to look at it with me afterwards. Um, 
So there's a master station, and that takes information from PLCs and RTUs and converts it into a more human-readable format uh, for use in an H HMI, which is something like that. Generally, a point-and-click your way to controlling a SCADA network. As you can see here, this is for our <clears throat> industrial food tech. You can control heat, pressure, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, the communications layer of a SCADA network uh, is traditionally a mix of radio and direct serial connections, protocol called uh, RS-485, which is multi-point serial, used to transfer Modbus and other low-level SCADA protocols. These days, we are actually moving to a brave new interconnected world where we want everything to run over IP, from toasters to fridges. And so we've got standards like Open Modbus, uh, DNP3, these all run over IP networks, and there's an open architecture which allows people to use multiple vendors' uh, products. So historically, we could describe SCADA networks as quite primitive, and they ran off proprietary hardware, and you need you know, closed source manuals. And so as such, true or false, they were considered to be immune to outside threats. These days, in our brave new interconnected world, Everything is connected to the corporate LAN for reasons of monitoring, alerting, producing those graphs that managers know and love so much. And unfortunately, modern stuff is susceptible to relatively modern or not so modern threats. So you've got you know, old, old school but still new school for SCADA network types of attacks which basically work. So the core guys have been beating pretty savagely on SCADA recently. And uh, Wonderware, which is a vendor we'll see a bit later as well, they're a really big vendor, and Core found sending a malform packet to a random TCP port caused a crash in the software. I mean, this is you know, pretty old school stuff. What's interesting, if you read the notes, is that uh, they sent the vendor proof of concept code in Python. Wonderware asks for compiler tools to run Python. Core says go to python.org. You know, I mean, this is while while companies like Microsoft and Cisco and so forth are used to doing the vulnerability dance. Big SCADA vendors still aren't, and are still don't really have that sort of relationship with the security community. Uh, this is another one found by Core. Uh, again, it's like a canonical stack overflow, uh, improper length checking, long buffer. And I said, you know, sort of same bug, different app. It, it's, you know. There's a lot of research being published on it at the moment. These are some of the favorite talks that I've read recently. Uh, it's, it's a hot topic because the possible ramifications of a SCADA compromise could be pretty big, as we've seen. And in the media, I think in the public mind, cyber terrorism is like the new chemical warfare, or like chemical warfare was in the 80s. We're really, really afraid of it, and a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, that and SCADA, SCADA is changing from, as I said, proprietary, obscure, isolated, and theoretically immune to attack towards standard, documented, and connected systems. <clears throat> so what that basically means is that you can, you can test or hack SCADA systems with a lot of the knowledge you already have. Uh, I mean, you saw Mark Bristow before, wrote a custom tool, ModScan. There's a Sully fuzzer out there. It's sweet if you know low-level pr protocols like those guys, but you don't actually need to. Uh, if you've got good knowledge of wireless, good common systems knowledge, VoIP, so on and so forth, you can get quite a long way. And if you're prepared to be intelligent about your intel gathering techniques and go a bit old school, then you can actually find this quite easy. So old school is good school. I'm going to talk about some stuff that I imagine everyone here knows. Uh, if, if you don't know much about radio scanning, there is a wealth of knowledge online. Like radio geeks really like writing stuff down. Uh, there's a protocol called POC, POCSAG, um, which is used for pager messages. Now, a lot of SCADA alerts are sent via pager over radio link. This is because sending really critical messages over IP networks isn't a great idea. You know, one carrier has a problem, you don't get your message for a couple of hours, if at all, blah, blah, blah. So pager network is dependable, reliable, unfortunately it goes over a clear text link. So that means anyone with really cheap, cheap gear can, can read it. Now this is a really cheap and nasty scanner. I've got a better one, but this was 250 NZD at an electronics store across the road from my house. So, what, what do I actually get from cheap and nasty gear like this? Well, in this particular slide, 
we can see what the state of the system is. We can see they've got some issues here, right? There's a strong smell of open sewer. Mod bus is offline. We keep going through the conversation, and rather nicely, it, it tells us what sort of syst uh, software they're using. They're using a software called Scart Alarm, which is, is another Wonderware product. Rather usefully, again, now I've scrubbed these because I checked before the talk and these numbers are still good, but rather usefully, they provide you with dial-in numbers and a legitimate fault ID. So what, what, what does that give us? Now, you Google for SCART alarm, and here's, here's the pimping. It's an alarm event notification software, blah, 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 blah. Users can listen to and acknowledge alarms and, ah, operate equipment via telephone from remote locations saving valuable time and money and effort for your lazy hacker. So, I mean, huh, breaks down like this. It's an IVR control system for a SCADA network. You dial in, you provide the ID, and then you can punch button your way through SCADA control. Now, authentication, now it says on the Wonderware site, Wonderware is all up on the security. Um, unfortunately, that means authors done via caller ID, and that's actually disabled by default. But um, modern VoIP techniques make ID spoofing reasonably trivial to bypass this. So well, what else can we find by that? Like, so if you're war dialing, and I'm presuming everyone should be really well up on that, uh, there's a bunch of free tools to do this. That's iWar. This is Hydro IVR, which is better, provides paralyzed VoIP war dialing. So you can chop through really big number blocks that used to take you three, four days and a couple of hours listen to the records later. Um, and, yeah, unauthed access to heat computers and so forth. Like, people really don't audit their phone lines properly. So, thinking a bit about SCADA hacking for the practical security consultant, we had a job a little while ago. Like, a lot of companies have a really tight net presence these days, right? So you look at their website, their mail, all that sort of stuff, which is traditional, and, you know, it's, it, it, was, it was pretty tight. But, um... Whoa. We, we, we tried to walk on site, and they were all like, ID badge this, please leave that, which, you know, didn't work very well. We looked at their wireless, which is WPA2, that was quite good. Sort of getting a bit disheartened and then thought, well, this is a SCADA network, right? These guys are geographically spread out across the whole country. They got a lot of sites. Let's start driving around and have a look at it. So we drove out into the middle of nowhere, and we, um, we found a remote site which had big ass electric fence, security guard, looked quite intimidating. And we were wondering well, what we could do. So we had a look at the wireless. Now, we managed to crack the wireless. We managed to get onto the corporate network, which was chewy and soft on the inside and had very poor architecture. The SCADA network was actually plugged directly into it. So after we'd owned the domain controller, we were able to own the SCADA network. Now, these guys looked really good from the outside. It was basically the fact that they had so many sites that it was really difficult for them to make sure that everything was adhered to corporate policy, patch, new tech, and so on and so forth. Now, you've been looking at this picture of the bushes for, you know, 30 seconds now, and you guys probably haven't seen the pertinent fact, which is down here. And what that is, is there's a dude in the bushes with a big-ass parabolic dish, right? <laughs> and so, I mean, that's the thing, is they had security guards and electric fences and so forth, but it availed them little to a long-haired hippie with Linux and, you know, so, and, you know, ownage. Right, so as I said, like it, it's kind of it's it's a slightly different ball game when you're trying to hack SCADA networks. These guys also had um, were hackable via dial-in lines. They've actually still had default passwords on on their SCADA software. Um, so the conclusions we can draw from this is that there's actually numerous connections to SCADA networks. It used to be believed that they're isolated, but you've got dial-in networks, radio, wireless, LAN connections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the real problem with this is that these networks are insecure by design because they're anonymous, they don't have users on them. So passwords are simple, default, never changed. All the protocols are clear text. Um, normal corporate policies regarding user management, password rotation, etc., don't apply. So even if the corporates care about security and have policy guys that write big docs, chances are they're not being applied to. You can't, SCADA systems are rarely patched. Most vendors have an SLA to provide one patch a year, if that. So this leads to a really large phone window. Generally what you do is you install your SCADA system and walk away and just replace it when it's out of date. So as you can see, like a really different model to traditional IT networks. Uh, 
you know, the lifetime of the gear is a lot longer, really patched, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's some good things happening in SCADA security, new standards, excellent practical guides, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you really need to conduct physical site surveys, stuff like that, because you know the guy in the bushes. Um, lock picking is actually pretty trivial, uh, and and as I said. SCADA networks are really spread out. So as Mike Bristow said, you gain access to the wire. You can use this tool to pretty much own anything. Um, lock picking is pretty easy, especially when it comes to uh, asset owners, because they have lots of stuff to secure, so they buy really shitty locks. You can shim padlocks really easily. If you don't believe me, go to the lockpick village. I saw Deviant Olam shim a padlock with a piece of paper. I mean, yeah. I've seen, I've seen SCADA vendors use uh, wireless security cameras throughout there, which is really stupid because it's pretty easy to DOS wireless. Um, like here's, here's a site where they had a big ass electric fence, but it was protected by a lock that was that shitty. I mean, it doesn't matter if you spent like 20,000 bucks on your, your massive electric fence if you're using a $5 lock. And it just leads to long hairs up in your SCADA. Like, it's, yeah, not a good plan. Um, so basically, a lot of SCADA stuff these days, it does have, you know, more security features than it used to, where older security, older SCADA systems had none. But as is common, you know, a lot of this stuff is turned off by default. Uh, so it's a good idea to, you know, audit all that sort of stuff, make sure it's implemented. Now, you know, surfing uh, SCADA message boards, like where asset owners get together to bitch about SCADA security, I thought this was the best thing I've seen where this guy's like, yes, the threat from red teams, foreign governments, etc., is real, but seriously, I can't deal with it. It's not my problem. I can't deal with, you know, I don't have government-style security software. I don't have guards with submachine guns and flak jackets, and I pay taxes, and I'm actually worried about providing water sanitation services or whatever, so screw you guys, which, you know, it's fair enough. Um, so here's, here's another job I did, actually, where we basically... It's a difficult problem securing SCADA networks because people frequently admin security gear from the corporate side of their network. And so basically it means that if you compromise the business side of the network, then you will own SCADA without particularly sophisticated attacks. Largely because if you own the side of the network that admins the firewalls, you can just change them. So, we were at a customer site, and they took a really long time to actually get to us, and we were sitting in their lobby, so we got pissed off. Noticed there was a jack there, plugged into the wall, and found that it was live, which gave us access to the corporate internal. Now, we managed to own the internet server because they had insecure file upload dialogues. Um, password reuse gave us the domain controller, and that gave us arbitrary desktops. Now, what we actually owned was not an IT file server. It was just a dude's share who had two gig of documentation. Now, we'd been banging our heads against this firewall for quite a long time because it was guarding the SCADA network. These guys actually had pretty good architecture, and it was pretty annoying we couldn't get to the SCADA. However, two gig of documentation meant that we actually had their firewall configs and their passwords in clear text. And so what that meant was we now owned the firewall and all their switches and routers, which meant, well, we own the corporate network, we own the firewall, so let's just change the firewall rules and booyah, we own the SCADA network. Now, because users are stupid and reuse passwords, anyone whose password is password1 is probably going to reuse it on the other side too. Passwords are the same on the SCADA domain controller, and we own that, and there we go, right? So, you know, just, just for extra bonus points, we also realized that they were being stupid with their VoIP and using the same phone system on both sides of the network too. Um, so, I think I'm running out of time. So, in summation, it's a really good idea not to rely on your SCADA networks being secure because you think they're difficult or esoteric or strange. Uh, it, it's not going to work. Basically, we need to lean on SCADA vendors to be more open about the nature of the backdoors they have to admin systems and demand that they provide systems that can be secured. Now, I've been thinking a bit about who's going to make money out of this, all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt going around, and it's, it's, not, the, it's not the pen testers. It's, it's not even the SCADA vendors, it's actually the usual security players, right? Like you've got people like Checkpoint, Fortigate, etc., who are going to start selling magic bullet solutions and already have. So sort of beware snake oil and that sort of thing that's going to start going around. So while I think that a lot of the fear mongering these days is pretty crazy, uh, this is an issue that really needs attention. 
And we, we, we need to look at it with sort of skeptical, critical, but you know, reasonably open eyes and realize it's something that SCADA asset owners can't do on their own. We can't just yell at them to be more secure. There needs to be pressure put on guys like Wonderware who don't understand the security dance at all to actually you know, sort of step up. So that's me. Thanks a lot.